All right, as you may know, next week is spring break. You can tell it's spring break because it's snowing outside. <coughs> this makes a good point in the class to talk about the project. I've put out to uh, Angel uh, a description of the requirements of the project, and I'd like to take the time to talk about that today, to talk about what the expectations are, what you need to do, and, and really kind of give a preview of how the rest of the course is going to go. Um, so I'm going to start by bringing up the syllabus and looking at how the last seven weeks of the course is going to go. We finish eight weeks, we have spring break week off, and then we have seven more weeks at the end. If we look at the schedule at the very end of the syllabus, you'll see a couple of things. This is the first time I'm teaching this course this way. Um, we'll see how it goes. I think so far it's going, going pretty well. All right, this week is the week of the 11th, and we have wrapped up audio. All right. We have our spring break. Let me try to make this bigger. All right. After the spring break, we'll do a couple weeks on video. We'll do a couple weeks on animation. And then the last three weeks is time for you to work on your project. What that means is, for the most part, there won't be lectures during those weeks. That being said, the expectation of this project is that we've done things throughout this term to sort of get you ready to do this project, but we haven't gone over every single aspect of multimedia. And haven't gone over every single aspect of photo editing, haven't gone through every aspect of, of audio, and so on down the line. Therefore, during those last weeks of class, if there's any special topics that people need, I'll help them either in terms of doing a little mini lecture or help you on an individual basis. So I sort of hope, you know, my, my wish is, is that you take what we've learned in this class and run with it and go beyond it and do uh, a lot of stuff, uh, even beyond the scope of the stuff that we've discussed in a lecture. Um, those last three weeks, week 13, 14, and 15, will allow you to um, um, sort of cement that. In addition, at a couple points, we're going to have um, reviews and critiques, peer reviews. It's important, I think, for you to get feedback on what you're doing and what you've done. And it's good to get feedback from more than one person. I, mean, I can offer my viewpoint, but Everyone in this class, as a potential user of your site, imagining if you were creating a website that would be out on, out, uh, on the web, every person out there is a potential user. So you, know, you can get valuable input from other people, not just from me. So uh, in addition, you can sort of get ideas about your project. So that, that week, there'll be, uh, these weeks, there'll be work time, there'll be time for me to discuss some special topics. There will also be time uh, for you to collaborate and see what other people are doing, maybe get some ideas from people, uh, and uh, get some feedback from me and from other members of the class. You'll note there is, or there are, two pieces to this. All right? There's a design, and then there's a final project. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't work on the design until week 13. My suggestion would be now that I've defined the assignment, we're going to look at the definition of the assignment in more detail in a few minutes here, but now that we've uh, defined the assignment, you can start thinking slash working on it now. All right? Spring break, you know, you guys don't want to be bored. You know, if you're caught up on all your assignments and you've had enough rest and relaxation, 
perfect time to start thinking about your project and start with the design of it. In a few minutes, I'll talk about what, what I mean by the design of the project and, and what it will entail. All right. So it's not though you're expected to do everything within those last three weeks. You're sort of expected to start earlier on it. But those three weeks is where that will become the focus of the class, getting that done and, and taken care of. So there's two pieces of the project, the design, which is sort of the blueprint, a sketch, a description of what your project's going to look like, and then the actual project itself. Um, the actual project itself, we don't have a final in this class. You consider that actual project to be your final. It is due during finals week. All right. And like every assignment, it's due Wednesday of the week indicated. So this would be due Wednesday of week 14, which is probably like May 1st, I would think. And this is due Wednesday of finals week, which is probably May 15th. All right. Let's look at the actual project itself. And I created a project folder for this class. All right. And let me rearrange this real quick. We have the instructions. And then we have the two drop boxes. I believe I have increased the size of the drop boxes big enough so that you can upload your stuff. All right? If not, talk to me about it. Um, one thing sometimes you can do is, is be sure to only send me the files that are really needed and, and not all the files for your project, but just sort of the end result files. If you're still in a pickle about not being able to upload it because of space, you know, we'll figure out another way. You can burn on a CD, you can bring your thumb drive in, you know, we'll figure a way to, to get it. Uh, those of you that have Dropbox, you can put it up, not Angel Dropbox, but the website Dropbox, you can put it up there and I can grab it. So we'll figure out a way for you to get it to me. All right, so there's two phases. There's a design and there is the finished product. The design will be, you know, documents. It won't be completed pages or pictures. It'll be documents and sketches, and so Word documents, and maybe sketches that you do in Word, or maybe sketches that you do by hand and scan in, even. All right, would be a possibility. Your final project will be a collection of HTML files along with other related files. Now, how many of you have done HTML before? Oh, you're in the class now? Uh, so we have uh, three people, if I'm correct, um, um, that, that have never done any HTML or, or... I have. Okay. I wasn't sure. Just right, right, right. <laughs> uh, don't worry if you haven't. The HTML requirement won't be very stringent. I'll, I'll work through. That's one of the items that we can talk about during those last three weeks if you're having, uh, if you've never done HTML before. We can talk about doing enough basic HTML for, for you to get going and, and to do your site. All right. Those of you that have done HTML before, use this as a chance to experiment and, and expand your skills. All right. Um, again, you know, to put together a basic site like this, we can spend a few minutes. You know, I could spend a few minutes sort of giving you a shell of a template of HTML, and then you can just sort of fill in the gaps. All right. And we'll do that during those, those last weeks of class, probably early on within those last three weeks. All right, let's look at the requirements for the project and spend some time talking about them so that you understand exactly what is required of you. Really, the purpose of this is for uh, you a chance to, to put everything together. All right? And putting everything together, remember, there's always two aspects of multimedia, all right, developing multimedia materials. There's a design aspect where you figure out what to do. You figure out the right mix of multimedia. And you figure out what is going to be used to most effectively tell your story. All right? You know, developing with multimedia to a large degree is telling a story. All right? Now, to tell a story, you need to have a story to tell. And you need to try to figure out the best way to tell the story. 
And then you need the technical skills to be able to pull it off. So if I decide the best way for me to tell the story is with um, some text, some images, and some videos, and then maybe a small animation, then that's what you do. Part of your job is, is to figure out the best way to communicate your story, all right? whatever your story is and whatever the topic is. All right? So this is a chance for you to, to work semi-independently. Semi-independently by, uh, what I mean by that is, you know, I'm here as a resource to help you out with the stuff that maybe you're not sure how to do, whether it be creating an HTML page or whether it be how to do some animation that maybe we didn't talk about in class, or how to do some particular video editing technique or image editing or whatever. So I'm here as a resource during that time. But the impetus comes from you. You know, Figure out what you're going to do, figure out what you need to learn about to, to do that, and then work with me to make sure that it gets done. So you'll create a small multimedia website that contains approximately five to seven web pages linked to each other. All right? You can pick any topic you wish as long as it's appropriate for a college course project. And then I include some possible projects of things that people have done in the past. Don't feel that you're limited to those, though. You really, you know, I'm really pretty open. I don't recall ever saying, no, you can't do that as a project. Now, a few things to keep in mind. First of all, you need to pick a topic that you can handle well within those five to seven pages, which will likely mean that some folks may need to narrow their topic and some folks may need to broaden their you also need to pick something that will work particularly well with multimedia. All right. In other words, if you choose um, to do uh, a project on, say, a famous writer, and the only thing that you're thinking of putting on your site is some text that shows samples of the writer's writing, then that's probably not a good choice for a topic. I mean, it might be a wonderful topic, you know, it might be a wonderful writer, you might be able to do a great job with it, but part of the purpose of this assignment is to show how well you use multimedia. So yeah, that might be a great way to handle that topic, but it doesn't show off your skills enough. All right? And I need to be in a position to make sure that you understand and that you can effectively use the things that we learned in this class. So one thing that you might have to to tweak your topic of a little bit is um, to, to, to figure out how you can incorporate uh, or pick a topic to which it won't really be a problem incorporating elements of multimedia. All right. Almost any topic, that being said, we can probably figure out a way, almost any topic to be broadened or narrowed or use multimedia within. So don't let the fact that you can't immediately think on how you can use multimedia on this example to, to persuade you not to, to uh, do a particular topic. I do want you to run the topic past me. I say get the topic approved, but it's more of a case of running it past me. And the reason I do that is more just to help you focus on uh, picking a topic that will make for a good project. All right. Like I said before, some topics lend themselves to multimedia more so than other projects. And as such, um, you know, we want to make sure we pick them. In addition, we might, might want to narrow or broaden the topic if we can't, it can't be covered well within the number of pages. Or if it's too narrow of a topic, if you can't find, you know, if it's a stretch to come up with more than a couple of pages for it. So we can broaden or narrow any topic. For this project, you're going to be creating HTML5 pages. Now, that 
is not meant to sound intimidating if you have not done HTML before. If you have not done HTML before, I'll cover enough HTML for you to just do the basics to get this turned in. We'll probably have a session or two where I talk about this and, and again, the idea of the HTML is most multimedia exists within the context of websites and web pages. So we want to make sure we know a little bit about incorporating multimedia into the web pages. And it's a nice way to just bring things together with the links and navigation and that sort of thing. So we'll spend a little bit of time doing this um, and I'll work with you if you have not done any web development before, any HTML development. If you have done HTML before, if you haven't done HTML5, this will be a good chance for you to review some of the new things that are in HTML5, like how you embed video onto a, a, a web page and so on. You're expected to use at least four of the multimedia elements we've talked about in the class. And that may sound like a lot, but when you consider two of them are text and images, you know, those are pretty straightforward. All right? So the five elements that we've talked about or will talk about in this class are text slash typography, images, audio, video, and animation. If you can't think of how to use four out of the five, then talk to me about it. All right? Because, you know, I'm not inflexible. If you have a great idea for a project that uses um, text, images, and video, but you can't really think of any other way to put audio or animation in it, let's talk about it. Maybe if you go beyond the call of duty with the video that you do, I'll be willing to overlook the fact that you don't have animation or audio on it. All right? In other words, I don't necessarily want you to force something in your uh, force something into your project just to make sure you have four out of five. Let's be reasonable and let's talk about it. And I'm sure you can do something to compensate for the missing one. All right. By the same token, if you have a project that in any way or shape or form doesn't conform to this structure, let's talk about it. If it's a reasonable, acceptable project, I, I may be willing to. Um, to uh, um, you know, uh, change some of the requirements in your particular case. That being said, sort of the default, unless we've talked about it in advance, I'm going to expect four out of the five multimedia elements uh, in your project. It's expected that you go beyond what we've discussed in the class. In other words, if you're going to do, if your uh, project um, relies a lot on images, do some great image editing. All right. If it requires uh, video, do some bang up video production and editing. Likewise with audio. All right. Be creative. Use any of the things that we talked in the class. The choice of the multimedia elements that you use should be made on what is going to most effectively communicate your purpose. All right? In other words, part of your job is not just creating video and creating audio and creating images, but deciding what you're going to include in your project. All right? Deciding that for this project, um, animation, audio, images, and text is what I need, and so on. Lastly, you must follow copyright laws with regard to this and all projects for this class. So uh, we talked a little bit about the fair use guidelines in this class. And to a large degree, as long as you don't take too much and give credit, you are able to, for academic projects, use material that you find on the web. That's sort of the overview of the project and, and what you ultimately will create. The next couple things that we're going to talk about are sort of the steps to get there. In other words, the two specific things that you're going to deliver. And I want to spend, I want to focus a bit on the plan, all right, because that's the one that students tend to have trouble thinking of. A lot of students like to dive right in and just roll up their sleeves and just start working and bang out something. 
What's wrong with that approach of just diving in and if you have to do a, a website or a multimedia uh, site about a topic, what's wrong with just rolling up your hands, taking your camera out, start shooting pictures and throwing it together without a lot of forethought? What's wrong with that approach? Okay. Uh, one thing is, is again, you know, your first idea, your first notion that pops into your head might not be the right one. If you think about a problem and you think about the story that you want to tell and you think about the goals that you want to achieve, that may help you realize what pieces of multimedia will be most effective in developing your site. In fact, taking a few minutes to think about and defining those goals is important because you can approach almost any topic from a variety of perspective with different goals in mind. For example, if I was doing a website or a multimedia presentation about skiing, for example, you might say my topic is skiing. Well, okay, but really is that a specific enough topic? Probably not. Am I trying to teach people to ski? Am I trying to get people to understand if they're watching racing on TV what the different kinds of races are? Is this something that's geared, geared for young folks, that you know, young people, high schoolers and, and younger, or is it geared for adults? Is it geared for people who are experts in skiing and who want to know about the different kinds of ski wax that you can use and all the different kinds of boots and that sort of stuff? Or is it geared towards a novice that doesn't know anything about skiing and just wants to get started? All right? All those things, taking a minute to really fine tune what your project is going to be about and what the goals of your project are is critical. And you typically don't get that just by sitting down and working and rolling up your sleeves and and start starting to develop the multimedia materials first. You know, it's the old thing, the old carpenter on TV, Norm Abrams, Norm, says, measure twice, cut once, right? You know, take the time to think about what you're going to do before you do it. There's actually a very scientific graph that says the same story as measure twice, cut once. And this is a graph that's applicable in all of software development. Whether you're talking about websites, multimedia, programming. There's a graph that shows and it compares the cost of making a change or a correction to a piece of software with the stage in which you discover it. Traditionally in software design, they talk about a couple different stages. They talk about analysis, design, build, test, implement, and maybe even maintenance. And the curve goes like this. In other words, the further on you go, the cost to correct a problem or to correct an oversight or a mistake or something you didn't think of goes up. And notice it not only goes up, this curve curves up. It goes up actually at an increasing rate. So it just doesn't increase linearly like getting a little more expensive, a little more expensive. At each step, it starts increasing faster, the costs. All right? What's the implication of that? The implication of that is spend as much time you can at this phase where catching your oversights are easy to fix. And catching stuff that you forgot about or didn't think of doesn't come at much of a cost. Think of it like building a house, all right? If you're building a house and you decide you want a 
a window there or an extra room or something like that. When the architect is still planning the house, and it only exists on paper and sketches, it doesn't probably cost that much to change your mind and to say, well, wait a minute, I want this room to be a little bit smaller, I want this room to be a little bit bigger, I want to put a door here and some windows here. Yeah, there's some expense in doing that. But compare the expense of doing that when it's on paper and the architect has planned it to when you're actually living in the house. All right? And you decide you want this room to be five feet bigger. All right? Where you got to tear down the wall and move stuff and there's dust and confusion in your house and all that. Same idea with software. If you catch something in the planning stages, you're in a much better position to correct it and correct it relatively inexpensively. So that's one reason why we take the time to plan. To really do our best to think about the best things that we can do so that we don't find out later on down the line that we missed the boat and we jumped in too quickly and started developing something before we really knew what was needed. There's another reason for creating the design document besides that. You know, planning anything is good. You know, planning a term paper is good. You know, you plan a term paper by writing an outline. Um, planning a speech is good. You know, you may come up with your note cards for your speech before you actually deliver it. All these things are good, and anything that you do that takes some time it's good to take some time and plan it first. Beyond that, there's another good reason for developing a design document that describes what you're going to do before you do it. Can anyone think of another reason? You have to go through constant revision. Okay, why is that? Okay, that's important. Um, in other words, when you come up with a design document, even then it's not finished. You may make changes to it, and it's good to have a document to say, to change things from, from here to there. Why is it important, though, to have a document instead of doing these things in your head? I've had some people say, I design in my head. I know what the layout's going to look like. I know what's going to be on there. What's wrong with that approach? Number one, I don't believe them. I don't believe that, that they can keep track of all those things. Number two, even if it is true, it's hard to share what's in your head. It is easy to share a document. So let's think about if you're developing this project. In many cases, you're developing the project not for your own benefit, but because you work somewhere. And the marketing department wants a little multimedia presentation about a new product, for example. Or you want a website about your club, or something like that. So you may be developing it, but oftentimes you're developing it for someone else. All right. Maybe you work part of a company and you're developing it, or maybe you're a freelancer and you're developing it for someone that wants something done, a website developed or multimedia materials prepared. You don't want to go through all the effort of creating everything, showing them the final product, and them saying, this is horrible. I don't like this at all. I think we should do this, that, and the other instead. All right? It's much better, and again, keeping in mind that graph that I drew, to show someone a document that says, this is what I'm going to do. Your website will have five pages on it. And the first page is going to look like this. There's going to be a big image on it and these links. Your second page is going to be a photo gallery that's going to have a list of images on it. Your third page is going to be a video demonstrating how to use the product, and so on down the line. People can respond to something when you put it in front of them as a document or some other form that they can actually look at as opposed to just abstractly speaking about it. So one of the reasons that you document your work is to share it with other people. Now, those people might be the people on whose behalf you're developing this site for. Or those people might be other people that are working with you in developing it. For example, 
there may be three people working on this project, all right? 